Hi everyone, I am back to do another speed review. So this time while I was filming other videos, I remembered to use these products on my face and film them for some b-roll. So I'm going to kind of just go in order of how I usually apply things. There are not like a mega bonanza of products. I do, I am working through this pretty slowly, but we're getting there one step at a time. I have worn all of these products at this point multiple times in multiple looks over the course of multiple different time periods. So that way I can try and have a nice well-formed opinion on these products. I'm going to start off with a primer. This is the Chantecai Rose Face Tint. This is very expensive. I got this for 25% off plus 10% cash back from Bergdorf Goodman. When I first saw this, it definitely reminded me of the kind of western answer to the Korean tone-up cream trend which blew off for a while where people would be using very very rosy very pink toned creams that basically completely blank out any yellow undertones and also will make your face look honestly several shades lighter it can actually be kind of scary how much it makes you look like a ghost so if you ever see a lot of korean influencers using these tone up creams or like tone up sunscreens or whatever you'd frequently see them have to bring it down to their neck i do have this sunscreen from espoir it is a tone up sunscreen i don't know how i feel about it i feel like it almost makes me look too light personally and it also just makes my undertone look kind of strange the amount of SPF I would need like you know how you have to apply two full fingers of sunscreen to cover your whole face using that this has so much pigment to it that I feel like it makes me look just absolutely like a ghost like it's not okay like I know I tend to use foundation that's lighter than I actually am and I know that we have we all have opinions on that but I think that Korean tone-up creams kind of are a little too much even for me so when when I saw this, I thought this would be similar, but without being as intense, like it would just add a subtle brightening effect, you know, not as big of a deal. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> it does nothing. It definitely looks, has a sheer pink tone to it when you open the jar and put it on your finger, but it does nothing. It, it doesn't brighten up or tone up anything, not even a little bit. I just was asking for a little bit. It didn't give me that. It is very deeply hydrating, but I still feel like it is not as hydrating as my Dominique Cosmetics Ultra Hydrating Primer, which is kind of my gold standard primer. I feel like this is not as hydrating as that. And it also, when I put it on, I could never wear this alone. It is marketed as a primer or as a wear alone. This makes all of my pores gleam. I can't do that. It looks terrible on its own. And once I put foundation on top, if I put on a foundation I like on top, obviously, then it looks fine. But this does not blur my pores. It just hydrates, but then it has like little sparklies and pearls in the formula that make my pores look so emphasized. It's not even funny. So at the end of the day, I don't think it's necessarily bad as a primer because the pearls kind of get covered up by the foundation and it is very hydrating, but it doesn't do any brightening and it doesn't do any blurring and I just I don't think this is worth the price at all I'm not gonna return it obviously because I am outside the return window for one and two I will you know try and use this up because I have it and it's like you know as a primer it is quite hydrating and stuff but um, it's kind of the closest thing hydration wise I can get to the ultra hydrating primer once I run out of that so I will hold on to it and I, but definitely, like, I'm glad I didn't pay full price for it, but even 25% off Chantikai is still a lot of money, so I am not super happy with this purchase, and I definitely don't recommend this, like, at all. The next kind of primer-ish product I use underneath foundation is the Rare Beauty Under Eye Brightener. I have it in the shade Light. I was not able to find this when it first came out. It sold out time and time again, and I ended up seeing it in stock when I was in Hawaii, so I bought it and I've been used. So I've been using this extensively for well over a month now. I just it's just taken me this long to actually talk about it. I love this. This is amazing. I feel like this is one of the best color correctors I've ever used, and it's not even a color corrector. It has pearl in it, which scared me, but the pearl somehow really manages to conceal your darkness and make your under eyes pull forward. So especially if you have sunken in tear grooves or whatever like me, this really helps to conceal those by causing the illusion of your eye bags coming forward and being filled. It is a really, really nice formula. It's also so thin, it feels like a lightly hydrating, really lightweight eye cream, watery eye cream kind of situation. So I feel like it doesn't add any thickness to my under eyes, so no creasing for me. Now, I don't really have too many fine lines under my eyes, but my under eyes can be very dry. I don't like to pile product under my eyes for coverage. I absolutely love how thin this is, and it wears beautifully. I wore this in Hawaii, it was very humid, and it wore fine. I never had any issues with my under eyes with this on. It doesn't make any go away completely on its own but I can definitely throw this on if I'm just going out running errands and I don't want to look dead 
then it just still makes me look more, much more awake. I really love this product. The applicator is kind of okay. I have to go into the product twice for both eyes. Like I go one dip for one eye, one dip for the other eye, as opposed to one dip for both eyes. I don't use the applicator to like rub on my under eyes. So the, the metal cooling effect is more or less lost on me. I just do a light dab, but I love how easy this product is to use. It wears so well on my skin. So I love to use this right on top of my primer and underneath my foundation. That's the way I like to use it. So I use this a lot. In the same vein of products that I really, really like is also as for the similar purpose is going to be the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Brightening Concealer. Now, I used to use the Complexion Rescue Skin Tint a lot, and then I kind of ended up not really liking sheer coverage products, so after I used it up, I just never got around to rebuying it. You might think then, why did I get this? Because this is kind of like a sheerish kind of natural concealer. Well, first off, I love the tube packaging. Doe foot packaging concealers kind of bother me sometimes just because they will eventually dry out and they dry out faster than tube packaging does like for example tube eye primers versus doe foot eye primers the doe foot ones do dry out faster but the second reason i like this is i use it for a similar purpose that i use the rare beauty under eye brightener for i use it underneath my foundation and it really has a surprising amount of coverage like on its own it's actually really good on its own to be honest and then on top of foundation with concealer on top like you can see today where i used it look i don't even have tear grooves you can't even see my tear grooves which is just madness like my under eyes look completely flawless no darkness whatsoever no sunkenness and this product really is truly amazing i love it and it feels like a hydrating eye cream it is it comes out thicker than the under eye brightener um you can see in the application it's a little bit thicker it almost has almost like an airy moussey feeling to it almost and it just feels so nice. It is so deeply hydrating, but it does, again, it doesn't add any thickness, dryness, heaviness, or cakiness to anything I put on top of my under eyes. It is so just creamy. It just feels so good for me to put on. So I actually really like this little guy. I could use this just like all over the inner parts of my face and just have like no makeup makeup if I wanted to. I even sometimes will use the Rare Beauty under eye brightener and then stick this on top if I just want to you know, look a little bit more alive without actually putting on a lot of makeup, like I'm just running out the door to like see some friends or something, then I can use those two products in conjunction with each other. So this gets five out of five stars from me. Now onto a product I absolutely hate is the Amelie Concealer Pre-Fit In and Out. I have been looking for a lavender concealer for a while, particularly because um, some parts under my eyes are kind of super yellow, but I also have a lot of hyperpigmentation on the corners of my mouth I really want to conceal. So I got this, and as you can see, it pretty much is a very white color. And you guys, this was disappointing. This was pretty much just as disappointing as the Chantecaille Rose face tint was because once I put it on and I blended it out, where did it go? There's no pigment. There's no coverage. It's so... It, it has... I put it on and I can see the lilac and it looks so white and so intense and then I blend it out and it literally disappears. This is a total no-go. I'm very bummed. I bought this off Beauty Box Korea. I waited for it to arrive. I paid for the shipping and it sucks, so... Uh, the better one is definitely going to be the purple up here in the Deceit Concealer palette, which I will go into detail in this in a future speed review, but I've been using this very well lately. I really enjoy this. I have been using the purple, and I've even gone into using the green to conceal the redness underneath my nostrils, which again, I will their b-roll um so i think this is the superior option and considering the fact that if you get amelie you have to like get it from a reseller and like pay for shipping and everything versus getting this from olive young you can get free shipping at 60 dollars. you can use a coupon whatever this is definitely going to be the easier one to obtain and it's better anyways this is way better like the purple in this so much better and then when i put the green here that gone like this is this is so much better um next is going to be a concealer and this time it's an actual like concealer concealer like i use this after foundation and that's going to be the tom ford a traceless soft matte concealer it looks like this i got it off selfridges for 48 us dollars it is 60 us dollars if you get it in the usa this could have been the ultimate concealer of my life it could have been because it blends out at the drop of a hat, finger, brush, sponge, whatever, especially even finger, it actually blends out amazingly if I just use my finger. Like I literally just do the lightest of taps and it just melts. This truly blends out and it looks exactly like my skin. When I put this on, I look like I didn't put anything on. It plays well with any kind of powders on top as well. This is truly the epitome of 
concealer that blends into your skin without looking bad ever and it wears extremely well like the finish of this the blendability the usability everything about this concealer is perfect but the only gripe i have is that this is a medium coverage concealer so if you are like me and you need full 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 coverage this is not gonna do it for you if i don't if i use this and i forgot to color correct beforehand i'm going to immediately get really frustrated so whenever i use this i do have to make sure i use like the rare beauty brightener or a color corrector or the bare minerals thing i use that underneath and then this can finish the job um so usually that would kind of irritate me but it blends out so well it looks so natural that i can forgive that that is how good this concealer is in terms of formula so if you have fine lines if you have really dry under eyes or i would say if you have like more mature under eyes i think this would be a really great option for you to try if you're okay with like the price tag because this is really expensive but this is a case where even though it's so expensive it truly performs beyond what other concealers and other price brackets perform at this is definitely on the next level. I've never seen a concealer blend out so easily and look as natural as this one. Like, it doesn't matter how much I put on either because I tried to build it up to full coverage and it still keeps blending out and looking like my skin. I, it doesn't look like I have makeup on. This is the one luxury beauty item I actually would have no trouble recommending. Again, if you are okay with the price like but please buy responsibly if you're the kind of person where you buy luxury makeup you don't mind splurging once in a while i actually can comfortably recommend this i feel like a lot of people are going to really like this okay so next we're moving on to foundations i'm gonna go over the one i like the most first which is the kvd good apple serum foundation now as you can see not my shade light 004 is my undertone but it's not my shade so um if i go any deeper then the undertones are not gonna fit me at all and it just makes me look super ashy or super orange and then by the time i get to my undertone again it is super tan so light 004 it is i just use a lot more contour than normal this foundation is it's weird because i know this foundation was marketed as normal to oily and then the balm foundation was marketed as normal to dry i kind of feel like it's the other way around this is actually really great on my skin. As long as I as long as I use a hydrating primer with my favorite under this primer being of course the Dominique Cosmetics primer. That one just plays well with like everything. This looks amazing and it makes my pores disappear. It wears really really well too, especially with the right powder. This can wear all day long. It looks great. I use very very thin layers, so I'm not getting total like paint on my face i cannot put on heavy layers of foundation like that it just makes my skin look so dry but even with the thin layers i use with this i get really high coverage like low full coverage i could call it really truly covers up everything that i wanted to cover like i don't need my full coverage foundation to like look like completely block out everything i just want it to be like very 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 high coverage you know this does everything that i want it to it looks really good the only real complaint i have is that it's too light because the undertones in the range are kind of funky for me personally yeah i really like this foundation and i found it to be way more dry skin friendly than i think it should have been marketed as i really like this on the other hand we have the giorgio armani power fabric foundation which i got in the shade one now first off if you're any lighter than me shade one ain't gonna work for you i am not tan by any means but i'm also definitely not the palest of people so if you wanted to try this foundation and you look like teresa is dead this is shade one <laughs> i don't know if it'll match you i got this because i thought matte foundation high coverage i really wanted to try it this is the reformulation so this is power fabric plus power the og power fabric i tried to get in shade two and that shade two is so dark compared to luminous silk so i had to return it i got this 25 percent off at armani beauty during a sale and i'm not super happy with the fact that i spent money on it it is really matte it dries down really quickly so you got to work your face in sections okay so first off you know be careful about that it is so matte the first time i used it it dried the heck out of my skin. I really, this time that I used it, it is on my face right now. I had to really go in with the primer. I had to go in with the setting spray. Like I had to make sure we were hydrated and then it looks pretty good, but it is so matte. I can't really set it well with powder. Or if I do set it with powder, I have to use a copious amount of setting spray to really kind of put the moisture back in. I don't know. I feel like this is almost too matte. It dries down so fast and it's so high maintenance. It requires a lot of intensive preparation to look good. Now, I will say if you do make it look good, it does look good. On a good day, my pores are like gone. But on a bad day, my skin's really dry. My pores are kind of visible. Uh, as you can see right now, you can see that it's not 
completely like particularly in the shadow you can see how my pores become kind of visible now that is partially because the blush i have on today is a little bit glowy and i accidentally brought it in a little too far but even then I feel like the KVD Serum Foundation is just easier to use and gives me a better effect more consistently. Power Fabric can look really good, but I just really have to baby my skin and prepare carefully. I just am not the biggest fan of how much work I have to put into it to make it work. I'm not saying it's a bad foundation by any means, I just think it probably was not a foundation I should have gotten for my skin type. As of right now though, me no likey. <laughs> but um, I think if you have dry skin like me, you may want to be warned. But if you have normal skin, oilier skin, I think you may actually really enjoy using this. Just, this does set down very quickly though, so just work in sections. Don't put it all over your face or else you'll be in for a bad time, okay? And we're good. Okay, next I've got blushes, and specifically I have the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Blush Wands. I have two shades, and in the demo I applied the pink one. It is not pink. This has definitely been said by other YouTubers. It's more of a warm coral and it is actually surprisingly sheer like i can really build it up without over applying it which honestly is kind of a good thing for me because the one reason i haven't bought the rare beauty blushes yet is because i'm terrified of how difficult it is going to be to apply those things because i've heard they are so pigmented this being so lightly pigmented actually makes it easy for me to apply now barrier in mind it does set down kind of quickly so you'll kind of see in the b-roll i kind of struggled to blend it out because i took too long rooting around for a brush it kind of started drying down and then by the time i tried to blend it out you can kind of see the circle that left behind so it does set down a little bit quickly but it does actually set down it doesn't become sticky i wouldn't say it sets down to a true matte finish it's nowhere near as matte as the nyx um blush want as the nyx kind of moussey blushes or the 3ce velvet liquid blushes those are truly super like blur soft matte this is definitely more of just like a natural finish satin finish but it's not sticky or anything it wears really well i gotta say that it looked just as vivid as the when i first put it on and this was after 10 hours okay so this that these last a really long time but in terms of like specifically the color I think a lot of us expected this to actually be pink and it wasn't. So if you're gonna get a color, I think Pink Pop is honestly the least impressive of them and you're better off going with like Peach Pop. Those other three shades are gonna be way better. I think as of right now, the biggest thing holding these back is not the formula. The formula is actually really quite nice. So I definitely feel kind of conflicted about these blush wands. I want to like them, but I just feel like the colors are not to my liking. Pink Pop is definitely not pink, but the formula is good. You know, I hate to talk these down since they are good, but I can't help how I feel about them. Whatever you want to make of that. The last two products I'm going to go over are actually both from Essence, so they are both under five bucks. Regardless of how I feel about them, if you want to go out and buy them, you are not out, out that much change. Woohoo for that, but I don't know what drew me to them. I just was browsing the Ulta section and I do and I was browsing the drugstore section and I just saw them stare back at me like and I was like and so I bought them. <laughs> the first one is going to be the Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder. I actually used to have a different shade of this way back in the day. It was the first bronzer I ever used cuz I was like I was asking my sister to help me buy some beginner starter makeup for when I was first learning how to use makeup and she got me a it was not this shade it was the darker and warmer shade of this but it had little diamonds in a circle instead of this wavy pattern like, I guess the nostalgia bit me and I wanted to try it I actually really like this this kind of reminds me of hula light except it is a little bit more pigmented and it is a little bit less powdery it is what i have on today and it is really nice i do really really like this it's really pretty it's hard to open though especially if i were to have longer nails i don't know how i'd open this but here's what it looks like massive pan i mean you know you get 15 grams or 0.52 ounces of product. That is, that is an astronomical amount of product. So you get a lot of product for not very much money and it looks amazing. As you can see, it is a warmer shade of bronzer on me. So it's really great for when I specifically want to warm up my complexion, but it also borderline kind of matches the shade of my neck when my neck is in shadow. My favorite use for this bronzer is if I'm wearing a foundation like the KVD foundation, it's too light. I can really apply a pretty heavy layer of this and it really helps it to look like I just brightened up the center of my face and the outside of my face is going to be a lot more natural looking. So this is like... A Jackson got the zoomies and jumped on to my desk. Hello, sir. It does kind of remind me of birthday suit from Jacqueline Cosmetics to some extent. 
So in terms of warmth levels, I prefer the warmth of this over this one. However, this one still has the silkier, smoother, creamier formula, which makes sense because this was like so expensive. This is definitely really good. So when I'm not playing the good for the price game here, this is good. I do really like this. The highlighter on the other hand, which is what I have on my face, considering how cheap it is, it's not awful. That's really the highest praise I can offer this. It feels quite chalky. Now, once you blend it out on the skin, you can see it does give off a nice sheen. When you actually blend it out on the skin, you do get a nice kind of glow, but it just feels dry. It's kind of hard to work in. If I use a brush, it looks god-awful. So if I use my finger, it looks a little bit better as you can see, but it's just, it's it's not the greatest. It, it's just, it's not, it's not quite there yet. And now this is one of those products where I will say it is good for the price because I don't think it's really that good. So I definitely would not really recommend you guys get this. If you guys want a drugstore highlighter, just if you're in Ulta and you want a drugstore highlighter, just toddle on over to the ColourPop section and pick up a Super Shock highlighter. Like, uh, I don't think I needed to go and get this. I got this mostly out of curiosity. It was like, what, two or three ninety nine. So, it's, you know, it's still cheaper than a Super Shock, but it's really, just go, just go get a Super Shock highlighter. I, you don't need this. It is aggressively okay. So that's all I really have to say on that one. Oh, I am so sorry. I have one other thing I forgot to speed review. I meant to add this in. It's the Buxom Wanderlust Primer Infused Blush in Havana. Now the formula itself is really, really good. I do actually have a second shade called Mykonos from when they were half off again. Initially when I got Havana, I thought it was going to be a lot more similar to like a brighter, cooler baby doll pink, but it ended up being much kind of darker and toned down borderline mauve. And because of that, I don't use it anywhere near as often as I thought I would. So the color is not really up my alley, but I will say the formula of this blush launch in general, it is legitimately a very good formula. So as you can see, I apply and blend it very easily. It has a very subtle amount of sheen to it that gives your face an exceedingly subtle natural glow. So it's not matte by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not gonna like sparkle dump your face either. And it's not gonna make all your pores appear. Like it's just got just a natural, very light sheen to it. Really, really pretty, very easy to use. And I think the sheen is what really makes it blend out so well. As you can see, I was able to customize the coverage pretty easily and I could build it up in multiple thin layers to get the intensity that I wanted. Um, my only complaint about Havana specifically is that it ended up being a lot less usable for me than I thought it was. Havana disappointed me, but not because of the formula. So I just wanted to warn you guys before if any of you guys were wanting Havana because you thought it was a cooler pink. It is a cooler pink, very cooler pink, and it's not bright at all. Everything's good now. So now I'm done. Now we are officially done. <laughs> My eyelash hung on so that's gonna end this video i think i reviewed like 12 products or something like that so more to come in the future i hope you guys are enjoying these i'll try to put some of the products in the thumbnail i think that was good at kind of catching you guys so if any of you guys were interested you knew to click that'll be it from me if you guys have any questions about any of these products as always feel free to ask this look was filmed i used um for the eye look the eye look is okay i also did use some eyeliner to add a little bit more purple to the ends of my eyes which I did not do in the video I filmed this with. I did it afterwards for filming this video. So I'm done here. I'm going to check out now and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.